iwe iroyin fun awon ara egba ati yoruba o si yoruba and english language newspaper that ran for 8 years from 1859 to 1867 for the egba people of abiokuta and the rest of yoruba land the paper is considered the first indigenous language newspaper in west africa and was under the direction of reverend henry townsend a missionary of the anglican church james ede an egba man who was trained by townsend served as the chief printer of the newspaper townsend's main intention was to propagate the anglican faith of christianity and to also encourage the egbas and other yorubas to read and write Wiroin was the first newspaper in Nigeria. Wiroin first hit the streets of Abeokuta on December 3, 1859 and was published every 15 days. The single edition had about 8 pages in total and was sold for 120 kairis. It published news of church activities, arrival and departure of religious dignitaries, ordinations, and so on. It later broadened its content by adding stories about Abeokuta, Kotna Koko statistics, and from 1860, carried adverts from local firms and government agencies. The paper was highly patronized by the few literates of that time living in Abeokuta and the entire Yoruba land. The circulation of the heroine was around 3000 copies every 2 weeks as at that time. The newspaper was cautioned by the CMS authorities in 1863 for some of its content that antagonized the colonial government, but this did not stop Townsend from running his newspaper. In January 1866, it appeared in two versions, one in English and the other in the Yoruba language. The English language version sold for one penny. Due to the insufficient technical equipment during the period, the paper was printed with the crude technology available and had no pictures, with its pages divided into two columns. The paper embraced the anti-slavery movement of the time and also made the proprietor Henry Townsend an influential man in Abeokuta. Townsend and Samuel Ajayi Crowder would go on to translate the Bible and hymns into the Yoruba language. However, the newspaper was also involved in some political matters of the time, especially those emanating from the viewpoint of the Egbas, and it became a major repository of major views on different political events affecting the residents of Abeokuta during the period. An uprising in Abeokuta in 1867 due to political and cultural differences between the colonialists and the Igbo indigenes led to the expulsion of all Europeans from Abeokuta at that time and the destruction of the newspaper's printing equipment which grounded its production as Igbo rioters raised the premises just 8 years after its establishment. This unfortunate event brought an end to Igbo ruin, the first newspaper in Nigeria. But before its total decline, it had already fulfilled its mission to develop the reading habit in the Abeokuta people, therefore leaving them to yearn for news after its demise. <music> Nevertheless, other newspaper industries sprung up, all in Lagos. The Anglo-African was founded by Robert Campbell. In 1863, it was a weekly newspaper which published stories called majorly from novels, magazines, books, and newspapers from abroad. The major aim in launching the paper was to exploit the growing interest in Western education and enlightenment in Lagos in the 1860s by providing cheap and accessible material which would educate, inform, and entertain its readers. But because of lack of money, to run the newspaper it ceased publication in 1865 also in november 1880 richard b blaze a nigerian sierra leonean businessman 
founded the Lagos Times and Gold Coast Advertiser. The Lagos Times was published every two weeks and was in circulation for three years. The newspaper achieved one major feat within its lifespan. It pioneered militant journalism and nationalism in southern Nigeria. It was a thorn in the flesh for the colonial administration. Like its predecessors, it ran into financial problems and finally ceased publication in November 1883. The paper's early death was expected because of its militancy. It did not enjoy the government's patronage by way of adverts and only a few individuals were in a position to insert adverts in the paper. This ultimately led to his death. However, in February 1882, before the Lagos Times went into oblivion, Black Hole Benjamin, a Sierra Leonean, had established another newspaper called the Lagos Observer. He hired the services of Dr. Nathaniel King, a brilliant medical doctor, and Robert Campbell. The death of these two gentlemen in 1884 affected the fortunes of the paper. But Benjamin carried on single-handedly. The paper did not thrive well and thus ceased production in 1890. Nevertheless, in terms of lifespan, the Lagos Observer was the most successful newspaper in the 19th century. Its role in politics too was distinguished. The newspaper emerged as one of the symbols of the intellectual aggression which characterized political developments in the two decades of the 19th century. Other newspapers that succeeded Iweroin were Andrew Thomas's Iweroin Eko on November 3, 1888, Lagos Weekly Record and Lagos Weekly Times by the Liberian-born businessman John Payne Jackson in 1890, and The Standard, founded by George Alfred Williams on September 16, 1894. J.S. Lee founded The Lagos Echo on September 1, 1894 while the Lagos Reporter was founded by Victor Manson on September 12, 1898. Others were The Nigerian Chronicle in 1908 and The Nigerian Times in 1910. Also, Sakitoye Ajasa, the first Nigerian to be knighted by the British, published a newspaper, National Pioneer in 1914 until the paper's demise in 1936. The paper was considered to be pro-government which made many people hate it. Ernest Kuli, the first newspaper editor produced by a Nigerian educational institution, founded the African Messenger on March 10, 1921. The newspaper only lasted for five years before it was forced to close due to financial difficulties. Following the demise of the African messenger, Adeyemo Alakija, the founder of Daily Times, struck an agreement with Ernest Ecoli, which resulted in the publication of the Daily Times. Ecoli went on to become the first editor of the Daily Times. It was likewise a pro-government publication modeled after the London Times. The Nigerian Daily Times, on the other hand, gave the Nigerian newspaper sector some energy and a fresh perspective. In addition, in 1948, the colonial authority made it a subsidiary of the London Daily Mirror in order to better serve British interests. The newspaper benefited greatly from these arrangements in many ways, including enhanced page planning and coverage of news as fresh ideas streamed in from the London Daily Mirror which was considered one of Britain's leading newspapers at the time. The newspaper grew so strong financially that it was able to poach reporters from rival publications. It also saw an increase in daily circulation, drawing additional adverts. Daily Times was able to expand as a result of these benefits and it continued to operate until the 1990s. Other newspapers established in the early 20th century in Nigeria were Abat Macaulay's The Lagos Daily News in 1927. This was in collaboration with Akinlade Kolkrik. 
The Nigerian Daily Telegraph by Akinfag Binrobe Yoko, also in 1927. Akede Eko by J.B. Thomas in 1929. The Comet by Duse Mohamed Ali in 1933. And Benjamin Namdi Azikwe's West African Pilot on November 22, 1937. The West African Pilot was the most popular nationalist daily at the time because Azikwe used it to effectively counter the pro-British Nigerian Daily Times. In addition, the paper pioneered numerous printing and typographic advances. Interestingly, on Friday, December 21, 2012, the Nigeria Union of Journalists, Ogun State Council, resurrected Iwe Roin in Abiyokutaha.